In the mountains and valleys of the state of Okaka, at 1,200 meters above sea level, Luz Maria Flores Marino lives among the banana, coffee, corn, bean, pepper, and squash plantations. This region in the south of Mexico is particularly lush. She has 10 brothers and sisters. Luis is the seventh. Nestled in a very remote location, Loma Ancha is her village. The indigenous community of the Triqui, who have fought for centuries to protect their land and natural resources, populates it. In 2007, they developed an autonomous municipality, which led to violent government repression. When her youngest sister was born eight years ago, her father left for the United States to try his luck. Ever since, Luis Maria and her brothers and sisters receive a bit of money from their father, who they barely remember, sums that are insufficient to support their large family. <laughs> The Triki are known for living barefoot. In 2013, a group of Triki children became famous by winning the Junior Basketball World Championship barefoot. In 2015, they went on to win the World Championship in Germany. Luis Maria is a fan and admires them greatly. Her brothers have taught her how to play. Her sisters and cousin Yahi play in the garden with improvised baskets between the jaws. Okaka is one of the Mexican states with the richest biodiversity and natural resources. It lies on the border with Chiapas and is three times as large as Belgium. But the poverty level is one of the highest in the country, and the social inequality has deepened considerably in the past few years. Alone at home with her children, Josefa, Luis Maria's mother, has a difficult time making ends meet. Tonight she's preparing corn tortillas for tomorrow's breakfast. Dawn has not yet broken. Before waking the children, Josepha lights the fire.
At 6 a.m., Nush Maria, her little brother and sister, leave the house. They have a two-hour journey ahead of them through the humid mountains, fields and paths that are infested with poisonous snakes and scorpions. A few days ago, Yahir was stung on his way to school. Even though they're used to it, the journey is exhausting because the trails are very steep in this irregular landscape. More than 90% of the Okakan territory is occupied by dense mountain jungles. There is a school closer to where they live, but they only teach in Triki. Lush Maria, Araceli and Yahia chose to cross the mountains every day so that they can learn in Spanish. They know that they will be able to communicate with the outer world if they learn the national language. They want to stack the odds in their favor. First obstacle on the children's journey to cross the torrent. The river has grown significantly since yesterday. The flow of the water is high and there is a strong current. Lush Maria is worried. She feels it's not prudent to cross here. Yahir insists despite his fall. He does not want to take a detour. Finally, Luis Maria wins. They'll take the longer and safer route.
At certain times of the year, the rains are very strong. The water levels rise to the point that their village, Loma Ancha, can be isolated for weeks on end, cut off from the rest of the world. The inhabitants make do by eating fruit, worried that a mudslide could easily destroy their homes. Regretfully, when that happens, Luis Maria and her brother and sister miss out on school. The longest road was actually the easiest. They were able to get ahead of the clock. The halfway point, they're happy to take a little break. Estoy cambiando mi ropa. Jugaremos en el bosque mientras el lobo no está, porque el lobo parece a todos. Comerá lobo, lobo, estás ahí. Estoy en medio de camino. Jugaremos en el bosque mientras que el lobo no está, porque el lobo parece a todos. Comerá lobo, lobo, estás ahí. Ahí voy. Once out of the jungle, the landscape radically changes, but they must continue to stay on their guard because many dangers abound. In these mountains, landslides are frequent because of loose stones. <laughs> It's important to be careful at every twist and turn of the road. Okay. 
Yeah, he's on his knee. Oh yeah, he's. That's not me. He's over here. Yo soy hoy pues tan negra ni un chico, no sé cómo está chile. They've been walking for two hours. They've almost arrived. They're no longer worried about being late. Close to this school, the first Catholic church of Santa Cruz, Rio Venado, is under construction. It's a collective work by all the inhabitants, their way of giving to the community. It's known as Tequil and is a pre-Hispanic tradition that the indigenous communities have perpetuated. Luz Maria is a disciplined, hard-working student, qualities which enable her to be a member of the Colored Guard, composed of the very best students. It's an honor to carry the flag. For this ritual, Luz Maria must wear a heopil, the traditional dress of the triki. Red symbolizes the caterpillar, and the many interlaced colors of the fabric illustrate the different stages in the life of a butterfly, an emblem that closely resembles Luz Maria and her classmates' lives.
¿Cuántos metros camina Damián? Pregunta dos. ¿Cuántos centímetros camina Damián? ¿Sí? Son esas dos este, preguntas que ustedes van a contestar. Contesten esto. Si tienen duda, pregunten. Throughout the world, every morning, thousands of children take to the road on their quest for knowledge. Their dreams will design the world of tomorrow. Maribel is the oldest of the Arce family. She is 11 years old. Every morning she wakes up at 5 a.m. to care for the animals of the family ranch in San Gregorio, situated in the peninsula of Baja California. Despite her discretion, Maribel has quite a character. Mature and responsible for her age, she takes her work very seriously. The help she and her two younger brothers give is important to their parents, Loreto and Socorro. In addition to raising animals, they also grow fruits and vegetables. They are three siblings. Julian is the youngest, Juan Jesus, and Maribel is the oldest. Maribel is very protective of her animals. Juan Jesus is much more impulsive, and at eight years old, his dream is to take care of the ranch and become a breeder just like his father, a veritable ranchero. Maribel is the best student in her class, and she makes it a point to be a good example to her younger brothers. Very studious, she is very disciplined with her homework. Being the oldest and most advanced, she loves helping them. Thank you. 
Nu le vei. O joc pe ziete. One of the principal sources of revenue for the family comes from goat cheese that is sold in the neighboring villages. This is the work of the women of the family. Socorro, her mother, would love to hand this chore over to Maribel, but it is a craft that has been handed down for generations and requires mastering. <laughs> Maribel is of a very curious nature. She takes advantage of this moment to know more about her family history. In addition to goat raising, fruit, vegetable and grain farming, Loreto is a leather artisan. A tradition he's handing down to his children. The most important thing to him is knowing that his children are good students. It's the best gift they could ever give to him. Maribel pursues her family investigation with her father, asking about her grandparents, their names, their habits, their beliefs, and their lifestyle. Everything concerning her roots and past interests her. Maribel is proud to wear shoes made by her father. Wow. Maribel's world may be the wide open spaces of the arid desert and her harmonious and simple way of life, but she is also passionate about her studies. Going to school is a great outlet for her enormous curiosity. When she's older, she wants to become a teacher so that she can inspire the children to love learning. It is 5 a.m. The entire family rises every morning at this time. They live in a small stone house with a straw roof that has four rooms, three small bedrooms and a narrow kitchen. Despite its isolation, the farm is located close to an important archaeological site. Two kilometers away from the ranch is a famous cave with the oldest and most beautiful rock art of Mexico. Perhaps her proximity to this cultural treasure inspired Mirabel's love for history.
In order to save time, Loretto begins saddling up the mules while the children prepare for school and get their uniforms and supplies ready. Their school is 31 kilometers away, the closest in the whole region. Before leaving, Maribel contacts her grandmother by radio to let her know she's leaving with Juan Jesus. Their grandparents live at another ranch an hour and a half away from here. A stop at their ranch allows the children to cut the journey in two. Separated from the rest of Mexico, the long and narrow Baja California Peninsula is cut down the middle by the desert mountains. This area is infested with reptiles, specifically rattlesnakes, which are extremely dangerous. At the beginning of the journey, Maribel always goes first in front of Juan Jesus. It is her way of protecting her younger brother and showing the way. But she sometimes gives up and allows him to go first. The rocky ground slows them down. Even the donkeys who are used to walking through any terrain have a hard time finding their balance. There is always the danger of an animal falling. The children must concentrate and be very careful. In this desert, where they can easily go dozens of miles without seeing a soul, they can only count on themselves in the event of a problem. Maribel and Juan Jesus pass by some of the biggest cacti in the world on their way to school. It's a veritable adventure. Between the steep mountain ranges that plunge into the desert and the forest of giant cacti, galloping through this virgin landscape, they feel truly free and alive.
Maribel is much more responsible than her little brother and knows the golden rule of the desert. Drink water sparingly. The journey is exhausting and dangerous, much too long to repeat every week. As a result, Maribel and Juan Jesus return home only twice a month. To spare their mount as much as to entertain themselves, Maribel and Juan Jesus move forward in stages. Born here in the Sierra de San Francisco, they know it inside out, especially its hidden treasure, the rock art the oldest being 9,000 years old. A visible trace of the first people to inhabit the region, these figures painted on the rocks are a big part of their history and culture, one that Maribel and Juan Jesus are very proud of. Maribel is more sensitive to the beauty of the landscape than Juan Jesus. A stroke of bad luck. Maribel's school bag fell 30 meters. Getting it back will not be easy. But there is no way she can leave without it. Inside are her clothing, uniforms, school supplies and homework. Vamos allá abajo.
After an hour and a half trip, they reached the San Gregorito Ranch, where their grandparents lived. A necessary halt to regain their strength, refresh themselves, and above all, to contact their parents via radio to let them know they've arrived safe and sound. Papá de mi nana Pio Quinta. También de aquí pues se nublaba y se limpiaba y aquí yo vi y se quitaba pues. Pues Gregorio, San Gregorio. Buenos días, ¿cómo están? Bien, gracias a Dios. The last part of the journey is on foot. Maribel takes off her tennis shoes and puts on the nice leather shoes made by her father. Maribel and Juan Jesus have the longest journey out of all the students in their school. Three hours when everything goes to plan. jugando la pelota, aquí estoy arriendo la chiva. Estos son mis padres haciendo el queso. Mi abuelito en Nacho, donde acarreaba el tequila por las montañas. Y este es de las pinturas rupestres. Mis antepasados hicieron las pinturas rupestres. Okay, muy bien. Throughout the world, every morning, thousands of children take to the road on their quest for knowledge. Muy bien, their dreams will design the world of tomorrow. A mí me gusta de la escuela trabajar en equipos para cuando una persona quiera pedir trabajo, le piden cosas del estudio y uno se, le, se lo tiene que entregar para poder trabajar y ganarse el dinero y salir adelante. A mí me gustaría ser maestra para que los niños que vivan en ranchos 
lejano, así. Es trabajar en un rancho y enseñarles lo, lo importante que es una escuela.